Hello and welcome, this is Dawn. Today we are gonna be doing some No Fuss Watercolor featuring the Honeybee Stamps Floral Vase Stamp and Die. Now, I call this No Fuss because we're not gonna be overly careful. We're actually gonna use our brush and the strokes that it makes to create our florals and we're gonna use the stamp as a guide. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be using the Floral Vase Stamp and we're gonna use the die today. I'm gonna to be using the large image and the two smaller images that layer on top. For my watercolor paper, you can use your favorite watercolor paper. I'm using the Prima watercolor paper pad here. I do believe they've replaced this one with an even higher quality. This one is great, so I'm excited for the 100% cotton version. To release paper from the pads that are gummed on uh, more than one side here, you'll need a palette knife or a butter knife. You just run the edge of that underneath the top sheet to release it. For this technique, you'll wanna do some no-line coloring. So choose your favorite ink, whether it's a no-line coloring ink, or as in my case, I prefer the Distress Ink and Antique Linen. I, I think it's the perfect color. It dissolves with water in most areas, and if it doesn't, it's not so dark that it stands out in the final result. But again, in most cases, any light color ink will work. You don't have to worry about getting a perfect impression for this technique either. You just need enough to get a general idea of where everything is. Again, this technique is leans more toward expressive. We are not going to be meticulously painting in every petal and every leaf. We're going to be using the brush and the strokes that the brush makes to create our petals and our leaves. So you can see here, it's not perfect, but there is plenty there for me to see what is what. I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the remaining images and that way I have everything stamped out and ready to go. So let's take a look at the supplies that I'm gonna be using for watercoloring. Again, you can use whatever your favorites are, but I really love this Mungyo 48 pan watercolor set. It's economical and it's decent quality. However, you don't need a high quality watercolor set to do this technique. We're gonna be doing everything in basically two layers, a base layer and a detail layer. So even your lower quality watercolors will work for this. For the brushes, I'm gonna use the same brush for the entire painting. I prefer the number six Princeton Heritage Round. This is their 4050 series, or a number five Princeton Velvet Touch, number four Snap Round. Any of these types of brushes will work. I like something with a little bit more firm snap to the uh, tip there. You could use a softer brush. But again, my preference is something with a little more firmer tip for this technique. Now, I am going to be using the number five Princeton Velvet Touch. And this is a great brush. It's uh, decent sized. It comes to a great point. And um, I, I think this is a really good all-purpose brush. I like to start with the flower centers. And for that, I'm using a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to come in and just put a dot of color into the center and then a bunch of tiny little dots around the outside of that center using the very tip of my brush. If I get too much pigment in there, I'll just use a thirsty brush, which is where I've dried the brush off on the paper towel, and then I can lift some of that color out. While it's wet, I'm just gonna tap in a tiny bit of this yellow mixed with some burnt sienna and add a few little dots around the outside so that can mingle with the yellow that I already put on the paper. So for the petals, I have mixed up a coral color. This is a magenta mixed with that same yellow and then a little bit of Jean Brilliant added in. This is gonna give me a beautiful corally color that I can use for those larger flowers. Now for the first layer, I want it to be relatively light, so I'm adding more water to this mixture to lighten it up. You'll notice that I keep tapping my brush on the paper towel. That's so I can see how much pigment is in my brush, and I can adjust based on how much pigment comes off on that paper towel. So for the petals, we're gonna start at the base of the petal, push the brush, and pull out to the end of the petal. Push and pull. That is the main, the main technique that we're gonna use for everything here is a push and pull method. You can see that I'm not trying to perfectly draw out every 
end of the flower petal, like the tips of the flower petals. I'm not trying to round them off. I'm just pushing and pulling that brush to distribute color over the petal. I'm leaving a lot of white space in between and at the edges of the petals because the white of the paper is our highlight. So we don't want to fill the whole thing in with color. Leave some of that white space if you don't like it. You can always come in and add more color to it after it's dried. But I always wait until it's dry before I make that determination because it's really easy to lose all of the white of your paper. Again, same thing here. I'm going to put some pigment on my brush and push and pull for each petal. I'm trying to make the petal shapes in two, no more than three strokes. So I'll push and pull. Sometimes I'll take some more pigment off my brush, push and pull, push and pull. Sometimes I'll dilute the pigment that's on my brush by dipping it in my water. And this will give me varying levels of pigment load on my brush so that my color isn't all one strength. So I'll have some areas of deep color and some areas of light color. Anywhere I want to add more, I'll just load up a little bit of pigment on my brush and tap it into the areas that are already wet and let the water carry that pigment across the petal. So here you can see I'm going to tap in some at the base of this petal and just let the water carry it. I'll add in a little bit more to this petal up here and a little bit at the base of that petal and then add a few more random strokes. All of the ends and the edges of those petals are very jagged and uneven, and I'm fine with it. Don't worry. As we build up the rest of this image, everything will make sense. Watercolor always looks horrible <laughs> until it doesn't. So just trust the process. Don't try to overwork it. Drop your pigment and leave it. This style of watercolor actually relies on that more relaxed look. So the more relaxed you can be when you're doing this, the better it's going to turn out. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but trust me, sometimes just dropping that pigment on the paper and leaving it to do its own thing makes some magical, magical moments that you can't recreate if you're trying to control it too much. So for the yellow flowers, I started the same way. I put a little bit of a yellowy green into the center, and then I just tapped a darker sap green onto one side and then got out of there, left it alone, gonna let the water do the work. Just like the pink flowers for these yellow flowers, I'm gonna load up some pigment and I'm going to push and pull in the direction of the petal. Sometimes I'll take some of the pigment off of my brush Sometimes I'll add more pigment to my brush. But the goal here is to get varying levels of the depth of color without having to add too many extra layers. We're going for a spontaneous look here. So I am going to put this into faster motion, not too fast. This whole thing took me about 31 minutes and a couple seconds to watercolor. So I'm gonna speed it up just a bit so we can talk it through. The entire video is going to be focused on the watercoloring portion. So I wanna leave in all of it for you guys. And we're working about two times the speed now. I'm gonna keep a limited palette here. So for the smaller flowers, I'm gonna use that coral again. You'll notice that even when I'm mixing new colors, I will mix them with colors that I've already used in the painting. So for the coral, I used the yellow that I used for the little yellow flowers to make that coral. I'm also gonna do the same thing for the leaves. I'm gonna use the same greens that I used in the center of those flowers. This will keep all of my colors very harmonious. I've got a yellowy green and a more blue green mixed up on my palette here, and I'm gonna use both of those. For the leaves, I'm going to start off by pushing and pulling down one side of the leaf and then pushing and pulling down the other side of the leaf. So I'm dividing it in half and I'm, I'm creating like a fan. So you can see here, push and pull, go to the other side, push and pull. So I'm filling in the leaf without painting in the leaf, if that makes sense. I'm using those brush strokes to go down one side and then down the other in a fan pattern. 
Sometimes I will remove pigment, sometimes I'll add pigment. Okay, and you can see here up close, it's a hot mess. It looks like a hot mess, but again, just trust the process. All right, these little flower buds, they're really easy. Lots of, again, I can't, I'm, you guys are going to get tired of hearing me say push and pull. Push and pull, push and pull, that's it. There's your flower. A couple more little strokes around the outside of that. And it looks like the calyx closed up around that bud. Very easy. While it's wet, bring in some darker and drop that in. Let the water carry it. That's it. Now for my leaves, again, while they're still wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of deeper color. But again, I'm not trying to do too much here. Just dropping in some of that deeper color so that the water can let it blend with the layer underneath. Once I'm done dropping in some of that heavier color into the areas that are already wet, I'm gonna let that dry completely. And then we're gonna bring it down to real speed again, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do these little filler flowers. This one up here, it looks kind of like it could be a lilac or a hollyhock or something of that sort. I'm gonna take this, this is a navy or indigo to be exact, mixed with a little bit of gray, and that's gonna give it like this smoky blue color. And I'm going to make some random little dots on this paper. Look, just a dot here, a dot there, dot, dot, dot. Maybe spread some of that pigment out at the bottom. There we go. Pick up some of heavier concentration of indigo, and we're just gonna dot that into spots that are already wet. Let the water move that pigment. And we have something that resembles a fluffy little conical flower. I'm gonna pick up some green here, a little bit of green gold, and we're just going to kind of dot that in around our blue spots. This is gonna look like the, uh, it's gonna give the impression of some sort of stem, maybe some leaves. And again, just a few little random dots and strokes and let that blend in with the blue that's already on the paper. For these little puff ball flowers, this is in my mind almost like uh, sea holly would look or something of that nature, just this little puff ball. We're going to use that same blue and scribble in some color. Letting the edges be a little spiky, leaving a little bit of white break in there. And then we're gonna come in with a little more pigment and drop that into the color that we already laid down and again, let that blend with the water that's already on the paper and carry it wherever it wants. The pigment will not flow anywhere that the paper is not wet. So we know that it's gonna stay in the areas that we've already put down pigment. And then just like on the last one, we're gonna add in a little suggestion of stems here and that's going to complete the first layer for all of our florals. So we're going to go ahead and speed this back up and we're going to put in our detail layer. Now that this is all dry, we can come in and layer another on top of that using the same colors. Maybe we'll go a little bit darker, a little heavier with our pigment, but basically we're just adding in another layer of the same color on top of the previous color. And because watercolor is transparent, they're going to build and it will be darker on the second layer. We're going to add a little bit more pigment than we did last time. So you can see here, I've got less water in my paint mixture, more pigment. And I'm going to come in and just add a few brush strokes here and there to give some dimension to the flower. Now in this illustration, they've drawn in some uh, lines and some areas that would denote your shadows. Use those, if you can still see yours, use those as your guide. Just add some little strokes of pigment over those areas that are illustrated into the stamp and it will automatically give you your shadows. So you can see here, I'm just coming in and adding a little bit of deeper color. Do not cover your entire petal. You'll lose everything you did underneath. Make sure that you're leaving some of that lighter color visible few little random strokes here and there is really all you need to bring this to life. 
but you can already start to see how dimensional this is looking. We now have we now have highlights and we have shadows and we have midtones with two layers. For my yellow, I did add just a touch of that yellow gold, well, brownish gold mixture. I added just a little bit of that from up on my palette there to my yellow, and that's just going to make it a little bit more intense. Another thing that you may notice is that I am not softening out all of these edges when I add them. Occasionally, I will take some clean water and soften it out, but for the most part, I'm just leaving it with those hard edges. We're not looking for perfect, smooth transitions here. We're looking for more suggestive, more illustrative look. So now that our second layer on our flowers is pretty much done, we'll add just a touch to these, um, to these littler pink flowers. They're not really the star of the show, so you don't have to do too much. They're more of a filler flower in this bouquet. So a few little random strokes will be plenty. We're going to go ahead and move into the second layer for our leaves. And this is where we're really going to add some uh, movement to these leaves. I'm going to mix up a little bit heavier pigment of my green here. So I'm pulling some of that sap green onto my palette, adding a little indigo to it. That's going to make it darker. And I'm going to add a few strokes to these leaves. Sometimes I'll paint in a vein. Sometimes I will pull the darker color from the outside of the leaf toward the vein, but you'll notice I'm working in that fan or V pattern here. And just like before, I'll leave some of those strokes hard and sometimes I'll soften the edges of them out using a damp brush. So take the water off the brush and just kind of smooth off that edge. And that'll just help to give me a blend, a softer blend here and there. But I do want those uh, harder edges there sometimes. Little bit more deep green here in the crevices where the leaves would tuck up behind the flower. But again, just like before, nothing too crazy, nothing too, um, nothing too methodical or thought out just a few little random strokes here and there. And again, just like with the petals, the illustrator has put in some lines here to indicate where the veins of the leaves are. You can use those as your guide. Add your extra strokes of darker color over top of those or in between them. But you can see again, it's just those leaves are starting to pop now and they're really starting to uh, look dynamic. Now we're going to do a little bit more work on those flower centers just to add a little more deep darks to match the darks that we have going on in our leaves. I usually like to wait until it's dry to determine where I need more of my deepest darks because watercolor does dry back lighter, so it's going to look darker when it's wet. If you wait for it to dry back, you'll be able to tell exactly where you need to add more of those deep darks, and you're gonna do it very sparingly. So here I've mixed up a brown, and I'm just gonna add a few little dots for the stamens of these flowers. And then to the center of this other pink one, a few little dots for the stamen of my flowers. All right, my yellow flowers, I felt like they needed just a little more depth. So we're gonna add just a tiny bit right there to the centers. Again, they've dried back. Like I mentioned, it dries back lighter. So this is where I'm determining where I just need a few more darks. And now the blue flowers, they look a little unfinished compared to the others. So again, a few little taps of that deeper blue color. And now it brings them up to the same level of depth as the rest of the bouquet. 
I'm using that very, very tip of my brush just to do a few little light tapping motions. With the main part of our florals done here, it's time to tackle our vase. I'm going to start by wetting the vase, the whole thing. And I'm going to pick up that same blue that I used for our filler flowers and I'm going to start dropping that into my vase. I am not completely filling it. I'm just dropping the color a little bit along the edge, some along the bottom, and I'm letting the water carry it. While that's still wet, I'm going to come in and quickly paint in my stems. One long fluid motion for each stem and allow that to soften with the water in the vase. I'm going to add a few reflections on the glass. So I added a little bit of pink to the top there so it looks like the flower is reflecting on the vase. And then the areas where the vase would be darker, I'm adding a little bit more of that blue. So at the very bottom there and along the very edges. Now our vase, the vase is still wet and I need to add in a little bit of darks to those stems. But because it's wet, I'm gonna use a heavier pigment of paint here. So more pigment, more paint, less water. And I'm gonna start painting in a couple little strokes here and there along the stems to separate them from each other. You'll notice I'm not outlining the entire stem. I'm just adding a few strokes of that deeper dark color to separate the stems underneath there. So I'll have this nice soft layer of, what is it, the refraction in the water from the stems, and then a few little shots of that darker color to separate them from each other. And finally, I will add a little bit of the reflection in the glass there from the green. So just like I did with the pink flower, I'll add just a little bit of green to the glass there Use a clean brush and water to soften that just a bit. And now it'll look like it's a, a reflection on the glass. And then I'll set this aside to dry and I can make a determination later if I need to add any more deep darks to that vase once they're dry. In the meantime, I can move on to the smaller bouquets that we can die cut and layer on top to make this dimensional. Now I did uh, watercolor quite a few here. You can see I had all the stuff out and I was into the zone, so I just did a couple and now I have lots of options to build several cards. I went ahead and die cut some of the elements using the floral vase die. Here I did, I think I, I did cut out all of these um, smaller bouquets. And then for the vase, I only die cut, I die cut two of them out. But you can see here, we can die cut this smaller bouquet and then that layers right over top of the vase. Uh, it's pretty much a duplicate of the center area of that bouquet. So you could pop that up on foam tape. I also, like I said, die cut two of the vases out using the large die here so we can cut out that whole vase. And then we can build this up any way we want. We could use the smaller, um, the smaller flowers or we could use all three layers and really build up as much dimension as you like. So let's take a look at the cards that I decided to create with these. So first up, I went for a more layered shabby chic look. I die cut the entire vase as well as one of the uh, floral bouquets here, layered them on top of each other, and I used the little floral pick that's included in the die set to create this cute little arrangement. For my sentiments, I used the fresh squeezed stamp set, and then in the background, I used the Spring Medley 3D embossing folder and rubbed it with a little bit of pumice stone added some stitching and then use the opulent layers die back here along with some burlap. I love the way that this one turned out. It's just sweet. It's soft. It's kind of romantic and I love the way it turned out. But we can also go to the complete other end of the spectrum and go very elegant with this. So here I die cut the bouquet in the vase and then I decided to just trim off the vase portion. So I laid it on the edge, trimmed off the excess, and then the parts that were usable that were left, I used to fill in around the edges. Again, I used that 3D embossing folder in the background, that's the spring medley, and for the sentiment, I used the same fresh squeezed. Added a little bit of gold mirror cardstock um, as a mat, and I love how elegant this one looks, but how rustic the other one looks, using the exact same images. So here you can, it just shows how versatile the watercolor images are. And for my final card, I wanted to do something clean and simple. So here, I meant to use this as 
in its entirety, but I dropped an ink pad on the bottom half. And yes, there were some bad words that were said, but once I regained my composure, I decided to just chop off the ruined portion <laughs> and turn this into a five by five card. For the sentiment, I used the My Favorite Flower sentiment and dye, and I just matted this with some craft. Again, I love how elegant and simple this one turned out. So here you have three completely different styles all using the same imagery. So I just think that it goes to show how versatile watercolor is and how you can make it fit into any style. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, you can find all the featured products in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.